Good morning, everyone. Janie here and welcome back to my garden. I hope you all are having a great day and happy first day of summer. I, 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 this year is going by so quickly for me. I cannot even believe it is the first day of summer already, but so far it's been a fabulous year. Fantastic. So I am sitting on my driveway. Yes, I love sitting on my driveway and just chilling out and I'm next to my cut flower garden, which I've honestly kind of been neglecting a little bit. And there are a couple reasons for why I have been and mainly because there's not a ton of mature flowers. You can see that my larkspur back here, that's done and I'm just waiting for it to go to seed so I can harvest some of the seed. Um, and then my prairie sun rudbeckia is looking absolutely gorgeous, but everything else is very immature at this point. And I really, I think that that's my fault. So this year, last year was the first year I did my cut flower garden. It is a 10 foot by 20 foot space on the side of my garage. And last year I did it in rows and I did one planting round or one succession and it was a hit. I did have some time during the season where I had lulls, like for instance, I planted gomfrina which is a heat loving cut flower. And so that gomfrina didn't start growing until like midsummer, till it started getting really, really hot, days on end of triple digits. And then it just kind of blew up and I couldn't stop it from growing. Um, so, but for the most part, I had flowers to pick from pretty much the whole season. Now I kind of got a little greedy this year and I'm, you know, I was trying to fit as much flowers in my cut flower garden as I could. So what I did is I planned a succession plan, my cut flower garden succession plan, and I divided it up into three different rounds. So winter slash spring, um, and then spring slash summer, and then summer slash fall with the idea that once one flower was done, I would take it out and I would put a new flower in a new type of flower in. And I was just trying to fit as much as I possibly could in this cut flower garden in one season. And technically it's working, right? Like I'm doing my succession and I'm planting the new plants. And when it's time, yes, I have a bloom or <laughs> yes, I have two blooms or three blooms. Like for instance, my zinnias, I have one, two, three right now, right? Um, but then if you look at my plan, it's time to start sowing my summer fall seeds. And I only have three blooms of zinnias up right now. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I tried to pack too much in to one year. I need to let these, um, these flowers grow and mature and really bloom like the prairie sun rudbeckia is. I left the prairie sun rudbeckia in for longer than I had planned and it's still blooming and it's the thing, the flower that I'm picking on the most right now. So I, you know, this is all a learning process. This is only my second cut flower garden year um, and I'm, I'm learning as I go and it's really, it, it's, I, I really enjoy the learning process of it. I love seeing, um, you know, what works, what doesn't work, why that didn't work, you know, so I don't think of it as a fail, but I do think of it as something that I can build on next year. So my plan was, yes, last night I stayed up super late and I was just planning flowers, <laughs> which is honestly one of my favorite things to do. Um, my plan for next year is I'm only going to do two groupings of flowers or two successions. So that way I have my fall planted flowers that I'm just going to leave in and I'm going to enjoy their blooms for quite a while. Um, and then I'm going to plant my, you know, my main season flowers like my zinnias and my sunflowers and my cosmos. And I'm going to enjoy those all season long. Um, so that's my plan for next year. I actually, <laughs> I ordered seeds already and I'm going to give you guys I'm going to tell you guys this as a PSA, order your seeds sooner than you think. I get so frustrated when I know what kind of flower I want. I know what kind of flower I want to grow and I can't get the seeds because they're sold out and they seem to be selling out quicker and quicker and quicker. So I know it's the first day of summer. I totally get it. We should not be thinking about 2023 yet. However, start thinking about 2023. If you guys want to plant a cut flower garden and if you're particular about the type of flowers you want to grow, you got to get them sooner rather than later. So I just wanted to say that I'm going to show you guys a screenshot of all the seeds that I ordered. I ordered from Johnny Seeds, which is who I usually order from. I really like ordering their cut flowers from them just because they have really great information. Um, I don't like paying their shipping costs, but that's okay. 
Anyway, so I'm gonna do that today. And then I actually am gonna sow my summer fall uh, seeds. I'm actually gonna get the seed started just so I can kind of have the seedlings just in case. I'm, I'm going to leave this round in, you know, this round. I'll show you guys what I have here. And there's a lot of weeds in here, so <laughs> just be prepared. But um, I'm gonna show you guys what I have in here. And my plan is, is to leave most of this in until the flowers are done. So I'm not gonna rush myself and try and take it out just to fit a third succession or a third round of planting in if I don't need to. And if I don't use these seedlings, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. But I do wanna plant the seedling. I wanna have the seedlings just in case I, I have a spot that I need to plant in. Even right now, I do have a blank spot right here um, that I could I could shove a couple seedlings in, but I don't, I don't have any at this point. So like I said, it's all a learning experience. It's all um, building on what you learned the year before. And it's really funny, as I was planning, I just planned my uh, winter, my fall sown uh, winter spring cut flower garden, you know, my first round for next year. Um, the amount of knowledge that I have this year versus last year and just doing it. So it's just my third season of doing my cut flowers. The amount of knowledge I have of knowing what flower works in my area, when it's going to bloom, how well it blooms for me, all this kind of stuff is so much. Like every year it builds on what you know about cut flowers. So even if you're a beginner and if you're just starting, just give it a year or two and you're going to feel so much more confident about the whole thing. So let me start off this video, you know, after, after that very long introduction, <laughs> sorry. Let me start off this video with a little tour of a very weedy cut flower garden. <laughs> okay, and you can see right here, here's a little overview of my cut flower garden. Obviously the main thing that's going on here is this prairie sunroot beckia. And this prairie sunroot beckia, I actually fall sowed and did the cool flower method via Lisa Mason Ziegler, my favorite. Um, and they're doing fantastic. They are just taking over and they're blooming like crazy. And I have cut so much off of them already. They're, they're a wonderful, wonderful flower. However, had I followed my planned succession plan, so I made a Google Sheets document and I'll link it down below. I shared it with all of you guys um, earlier in the year um, but had I followed that plan these would be taken out already and something else would be in its place and I'd have little baby transplants in its place and I would literally have nothing to pick from at this point um, so you know there's there was some flaws in my plan and I'm recognizing that and I'm admitting it um, but that's okay you know we can we can change we can adapt as needed um, so yeah so basically none of this correlates with the plan so if you guys look at that plan you'll probably get really confused because nothing <laughs> really correlates same type of flowers just different places and different times so first off I have this lavender aster um, it is doing really well. It's starting to bulk up. You can see that one's looking really, really good. Um, and so this one should start blooming pretty soon. You know, I'm not sure when, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but, but it's doing pretty well. Right next to that, I have this mountain snow euphorbia, and this one's starting to look actually really pretty. Um, but these, as you know, as far as I know, they're just a, a single cut and done. So you can see, I just have one, two, three, four, five, six. I really only have six uh, stems that I can use. So I, I just, I don't know. I don't think that's enough. I think that that was, I'm probably not going to repeat that. Then I have here, I have the lemon basil that's starting to kind of bulk up with the heat and it's smelling really good. Here I have more asters. I have Valkyrie aster, um, which is again, it's bulking up, it's doing really well. But you can see this whole area right here is empty. And this whole area right here is empty. Um, so I'm hoping that some of the seeds that I'm sowing today will, I'll be able to plant in these two areas, you know, and not even worry about it. Um, and then as things kind of finish, like maybe as the Prairie Sun Rebecca finishes, I can take that out and I can plant more of that, um, more of the new seedlings in there. I hope that makes sense. This is my mass of zinnias and delphiniums. <laughs> so uh, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I have Benary's Giant Lime Green, gorgeous. Benary's Giant Bright Pink, another beautiful one. Then I have some random Oklahoma ones that my friend gave me. Look at this one over here. Look at that color. 
color. Isn't that pretty? I got to pick that soon. Um, and then I just left, I had these delphiniums that were still doing really well. Sorry about my shadow. They were still doing really well and they were still growing. So I decided just to leave them in and, um, uh, see if they would keep blooming and they're, they're still blooming. I'm still harvesting off of them. Right. And again, with my plan, these would have been totally out long gone. Um, and I would have missed out on all these blooms. So, you know, too, I, I just stuck, I just tried to stick too much. This is a very small space and I just tried, tried to cram too much in. And I just, you know, I had to try it. I had to try this out this year and I just, I don't think it worked very well for me. So here I have my Larkspur. This was very pretty. Um, I didn't do a very good job harvesting these just because I didn't have anything good to go with them when they were ready, but I'm letting them all go to seed. Um, and they're almost, they're, this one's, you know, you wanna wait for them to kind of brown. This one's basically done. Oh, this one is ready. Okay, I'll come out here and harvest these. Then I have my lemon aura sunflowers. Those guys are looking good. Actually, I have a bud over here. See that? And then here I have a couple of my dahlias. They're doing well as well. And then over, over there along my black fence, I have more dahlias and there's actually a couple of them that even have buds on it, which is very exciting. So it's almost dahlia time. It's almost zinnia time. It's almost sunflower time. And I love it. I also added, added in some bonus plantings. You guys will see that in my uh, succession plan Google Sheets. If you look at it, I have bonus plantings other places around my yard just so I have some stuff to pick from. I have this blue, tall blue planet floss flower that is absolutely beautiful. This is like totally in bloom and ready to be picked right now. Again, I'm doing that thing where I don't want to pick it because I really love it here in the garden, but I'm going to force myself to pick it. I'll pick it for Make a Bouquet Monday next week. And then over here, don't worry, I'm not going to do a garden tour. I just want to show you guys my bonus plantings. Over here, I have my Afternoon Sun Cosmos, which I have to say, I really, really like it with the Superbina, the white Superbina behind it. I think it's, that's, it's just so pretty, white on white. And then, if I come through here, I have my Leatris that I've been picking on, and then I have my um, Bells of Ireland that I've been picking on. And then two more to show you. I have my buttercream sunflower. Look at how beautiful that is. And it's a branching sunflower. So there's buds all over the place. Um, so I have those to pick from. And then finally coming in through my gate, I planted some apricot, let's see, king sized apricot asters, right? I love these guys. Now this is just one of the early ones, so it's not, um, usually it's like way more petals where you can barely see that the center and I love it when you just can't really see the center of a flower um, because they have so many petals. So this is ready to go. This is going to start going. So I do, you know, when I'm looking at this, I do have some flowers that I can pick from. I just wish there was more actually in my cut flower garden. So you can see there are things to pick from, but not nearly as much as I was planning. You know, I was planning just like a plethora of flowers to pick from at this point. And you know, everything still just started, just, just getting started. So for me to think of doing another succession, starting over again for my, um, my summer fall succession, it's like, no, I gotta, I gotta stop it some, somewhere. So like I said, I'm going to sow all my seeds for my summer fall succession, right? The next round, but I don't, I'm not gonna pull anything. I'm gonna leave everything here and let it bloom its little heart out and enjoy all the flowers and let it get mature before I take anything out um, and plant it with the new seedlings. But I might as well have them and I can even, you know, pot them up if I need to. Um, and then maybe I can find some extra spots in my cottage garden or something to put them in. I'll, I'll find a way, I'm sure. So let me show you guys what I picked for my next season, uh, my fall sown <laughs> winter spring uh, cut flower garden, the seeds. I am planning to do a lot of tulips and a lot of um, daffodils and ane anemones and ranunculus and I haven't got picked out those varieties yet but let me show you the seed varieties that I picked out from Johnny's. Okay so here 
is my order form from Johnny's and you can kind of see the first one I chose was this Madame Butterfly mix. This is a Snapdragon mix. I've grown Madame Butterflies before and I love them. I think they're so beautiful. I was not able to get specific colors so I had to get this mix because that was the only thing that was available at this time. So see what I'm talking about, <laughs> about having to order them early. Then the next one I have is this Sweet Pea Elegance Formula Mix. And you can see it's just, it's another mix of beautiful colors. Uh, I did Mammoth Choice Mix last year, and this one is just a different variety that I just wanna try. I thought those red ones were really pretty, and I think I could do a lot of uh, arrangements with that, especially around Valentine's Day. I thought that would be gorgeous. Then I have this Sweet White Dianthus, or Sweet William, and I've actually never grown Sweet William before. It's the first time that I'll be growing it. I've grown the annual Dianthus that's not really annual in my area, um, just for, you know, in my landscape, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how this does. It's basically taller than the landscape Dianthus, and, you know, it's like a carnation flower. <laughs> so I think it'll be really pretty as kind of like a filler. Then the next two I have, I have actually grown them before. I have green mist and then white dill ami or ami. And um, I'm using these as filler. And I got both of them because I did the white dill last year. Loved it, used it all the time. But then I kept harvesting them before they were ready because I liked the green color as well. So they they start off green and then they, they move to white. And you can see pictures of the white right here. Um, but I found myself harvesting them early just so I could get the green, just so I could have that, you know, ferny, uh, airy foliage as my filler flower from my bouquets. So I decided to do both of them and I'm excited about that even though they do reseed prolifically and I have to be ready to pull weeds. Then another one that I've never tried before is stock. Um, and this is the Cat's Formula Mix. It just seemed like the, the most generic one. They are single stem. So, you know, Oh, one and done, cut cut and done. So I'm interested to see how it's gonna go, but I really did wanna try this this year just because I've never tried any stock before. All right, now this one, this sweet pea is called Elegance Watermelon. And when I was watching that Florette show on Discovery Plus or whatever it was on, they kept showing pictures of her growing this bright coral colored sweet pea and it looks just like this one. And so I just, thought, okay, I'm <laughs> going to have to do it. It's kind of more of a summery color, but you know, sweet peas, they have to grow super, super early in our area because we get too hot. So I'm very, very excited for that one. And then finally, my tried and true, my known king size apricot china aster and this one it's funny because apricot usually they say it blooms later in the summer towards early fall but i did this one two years ago my first cut flower garden year and it was one of the first flowers to bloom and i used it all the time and i loved it okay so i've got all my trays filled i'm gonna put some just in these bigger trays i'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put the broom corn and I'm gonna put the sunflowers in these bigger, uh, like six cell trays, um, just because they do better with direct sewing, but I obviously can't direct sew them because I don't have any room right now. Um, so I'm gonna do them, put them in here with the hope that it will disturb their root system uh, less. I found last year when I transplanted the teddy bear sunflower, um, this one really didn't like transplanting. So I feel like I'm tempting fate by transplanting it, but you know, I might as well try it and see what I can do. And then I have this big one. This is a, what, a 72 count cell tray. This is the size that I normally use for my seedlings. Um, and I'm going to put all the rest of them. So I'm going to put the basil, the pampas plumes, celosia, Binary's purple, et cetera, et cetera. I'll go over all of them. Okay, so let's get started with the broom corn, the teddy bear sunflower, and then the other sunflower, which is Pro Cut Plum. Okay, so we'll start with the Pro Cut Plum. Uh, this one's beautiful, I'll put a picture up right now. Uh, but again, this is only a single stem 
cut flower, so it's gonna take up a lot of space for one cut flower. So I'll do six of them and see how I like them and see how it does, and then maybe I can do um, a couple more, you know, like a couple of successions as it goes. It says right here, plants dislike root disturbance, but sowing indoors and transplanting out the first crop can be a successful way to have first early sunflowers. So it says right on the package, this is why I like Johnny's, it says right on the package it doesn't like transplanting, but I'm gonna try it. It, you know, if they're a little wonky, <laughs> that's okay. I'm just gonna see what I can do, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to use these this year, I don't think. Um, so it just says sow a half inch deep. So that's what I'm gonna do. So for this whole tray, I did not use seed starting mix simply because I think that the corn and the sunflowers can handle pushing their roots out through just regular planting mix. I just used the raised bed mix that I had left over from my stock tank planters. Um, and part of the reason is I'm out of seed starting mix. <laughs> I don't have any. It's, it's the first day of summer. I'm not <laughs> supposed to be sowing seeds, but that's all right. Okay. So next I have teddy bear dwarf sunflower. These are so cute. They're these big fuzzy sunflower heads and I really like them and I really enjoyed last year. So I'll do the same thing. And again, it says half inch deep. And then finally, I have the broom corn. And the whole reason why I'm doing this is so I can decorate my front porch with corn stalks. That's all, I'm, not, I'm just doing it for decoration. Um, and I, you know, you can get those at the pumpkin patches and everything like that, but I think it's fun to grow them yourself. So, let's see. Again, direct seeding is recommended. So anytime from last frost date through mid-June into well-drained fertile soil. Um, Let's see, so one eighth to one half inch deep. So I'll just do one half like the other ones. And I'm actually gonna do two holes of each of these. Like when you buy corn from you know, a big box store, they usually have two, maybe three seedlings in there and then you can kind of pull them apart. So that's how I'm gonna handle this. Look at those, aren't those pretty? And this is kind of what I love about gardening is that, you know, there are the right, right way to do things, but you don't have to follow it. You can kind of mess with it a little bit um, and you can find that you can get really good success if you, you know, if you're willing to kind of fail a little bit. And I find that the more I do that and the more I'm kind of okay with not doing it perfectly, um, I get some really great surprises, some, you know, um, Things that I didn't think would work really well end up working really well. For instance, the king-sized apricot asters that I'm putting in my cut flower garden for next winter, spring. Those are, asters are always said to be a summer plant. However, when I planted them last year in my cut flower garden, they were some of the first ones to bloom. So that variety in my area does really well and blooms really well early on. Um, so, you know, it's the same thing with this, doing it like this. It may not be the exact perfect way to do it, but I might as well try it and then I get the benefit. If it works, I get the benefit of enjoying these flowers that I might have not gotten to do had I, had I stuck with the proper exact right way to do it. So I am okay if this doesn't work, but I'm going to have fun trying. Okay, so on to my 72 count flat. We'll start, I just put them in just so I don't forget where I need to put the seeds. So I'm gonna start with the Benary Purple. I actually got these from Haas, which I'm not totally familiar with, but the more I look into it, the more I find um, that people really like this company, ordering seeds from this company. And the reason why I got them from here is I couldn't, they, they were all sold out. So this is the type of thing. I waited too long last year uh, to buy my seeds. And so I was kind of, you know, scrambling and trying to find a place. So that's why I tell you guys, get your seeds early. If you can plan it, obviously I'm totally ahead of schedule, but, um, but just do it sooner than you think.
So next I'm going to do the Pampas Plume Celosia. And for Celosia, it says on the back, to sow seeds into the flats, light is required for germination. So that means you don't want to bury them in the soil, in the seed starting mix. You just want to put it on the top. And then you can use vermiculite and kind of spray it, and then that will keep them in place. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle them on top of these 12 cells right here. And I've actually never grown celosia before, so I'm kind of excited. And this seed starting mix is totally moist. I pre-moistened it. I actually overly moistened it a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do to water, I'm gonna spray the vermiculite in right there, but then from then on, I'm gonna bottom water. So I have a tray underneath here, and I'm gonna fill the tray with water, and then I'm gonna let the plants soak up the water when they need it. Okay, so moving on to Indian Summer Rudbeckia. So same thing, it needs light for germination, so I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did with the Celosia. I think the amaranth needs the same thing as well. Yeah, barely cover seed. This is red spike amaranth, barely cover seed. So I'm gonna do the whole thing. What about the basil? Probably should have checked this before. No, so the basil you plant a quarter inch deep. Oh my goodness. These seeds are so tiny. Can you guys see that? Ugh. Being outdoors is not the right choice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go really fast. So I am completely overseeding, and I know that, and I'm planning to thin everything out. Once, so once the seedlings grow, I'll have way too many and I need to thin to one seedling per tray just so there's plenty of room. All right, and that's the cinnamon basil. I'm actually really excited about the cinnamon basil simply because I've never smelled it before. So I'm excited to try it and excited to use it as fillers in uh, my cut flower bouquets. Okay, all done. So these, both of these trays are actually gonna go indoors uh, on my seed starting shelf that I have in my bedroom. Yes, I have a seed starting shelf in my bedroom. <laughs> I just don't have any other space for it. So yes, they could totally go in my greenhouse. However, I'm really afraid that it will be too hot in the greenhouse for these seedlings. The greenhouse gets up to like 110, 115 on hot days, even more than that really. Um, and I just can't control it very well. So just to start off with, I'm gonna start them inside on my heating mats underneath my grow lights. And then I will, um, uh, slowly take them outdoors and get them, harden them off to the heat and get them used to, to being outside in, in the hot, hot sun. All of these plants can tolerate heat, but when they're little baby seedlings, you, like they could fry basically. So I'm just gonna kind of take care of them a little bit. I am gonna put humidity domes, at least on this one. I'm not gonna put it on, on the, that one over there, <laughs> the sunflowers and the broom corn. All right, so that is it for today's video. I feel kind of silly, first day of summer, and I'm sowing seeds and I'm planning for 2023, but that's where my brain is at right now. I don't know about you guys, but I just kind of get going on planning, uh, garden planning and seed planning, and I get on those websites and I just can't get off. So probably gonna end up taking a nap today because I was literally up to like midnight looking at the Johnny's website and all the other, you know, the bulb planting websites. It's, it's fun, it's something I love to do. It's better than watching just junk TV or something like that. So let me know if you all are starting any seeds at this time and if you guys are doing successions or anything like that. Any suggestions for fitting more into a small space, I would totally appreciate because I do not have a big yard. It's very, very small and I want, I want to fit as much flowers as I possibly can. And that's my ultimate goal, but I also want to enjoy the flowers as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I did today, and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.